October 1964 saw the introduction of a new generation of Ferrari, the 275 GTB. Still thought by many to be the most beautiful Ferrari ever, this new Berlinetta boasted Ferrari's first ever front engine car with independent rear suspension. The new car was powered with a 3.3 liter version of the original Colombo designed V12, bored out to 77 millimeters, but retaining the 59 millimeter stroke. The powerful single cam engine displaced 3,285 cc's with a compression ratio of 9.2 to 1. 280 horsepower was reached at 7,500 RPM. Body design by Pininfarina. Fabrication by Scaglietti. Each body was hand formed over a wooden buck, thereby rendering a custom look to each version. The first short-nosed versions featured a blunt snout with a large radiator opening, which caused some front end lift at high speeds. This was later rectified in the long nose version. Approximately 250 short and long nosed versions were produced, all with the single overhead cam V12. A long sloping hood with fared in transparent plastic headlamp covers highlighted just one of the new design features incorporated into the GTB. The wraparound windshield had an extreme rake and was similar in shape to that used on the GTO 64 and 250 LM cars. The body was truncated in the same manner as the GTO with a small aerodynamic spoiler completing the image. Six and a half by 14 inch starburst wheels with center lock hubs shod the GTB. Girling disc brakes provided the stopping power. Suspension front and rear was independent wishbone and featured coil over Coney shock absorbers. The GTB was listed at weighing 2,420 pounds dry. Three dual throat Weber carburetors provided proper fuel mixtures and the V12 boasted two distributors and two oil filters. The distributors were powered off of the end of each camshaft atop each head. The cylinder heads were constructed of aluminum as were the decidedly Ferrari valve covers. Always distinctive in their black crackle finish. The dominant air filter assembly actually acted as a plenum chamber. The interior of the GTB series was typically Ferrari class. Leather and wood abounds here, and the seats are constructed from cloth and leather. Complete instrumentation left no doubt in the driver's mind as to what was going on at all times with his prized possession. Excellent balance was derived from the rearward location of the five-speed transaxle.
This was decidedly a two-passenger automobile. The rear storage compartment was again tastefully outfitted and efficient. Note the inside mounted trunk hinges on this short-nosed version. The later long noses utilize exterior mounting of this hardware. Let's share a part of a GTB love affair with a proud owner, Robin Adrian. Uh, Robin, you've gone through uh, pretty much a complete restoration on this car. What problems arose during that work? Well, we found that there were a lot of things wrong with the body that we didn't expect. Uh, we knew that the doors didn't fit quite right and that the car may have been hit, but we then found out that the uh, windshield wasn't in properly and that's why it had a little crack in it, and so we had to straighten the entire top and uh, now the windshield fits fine, the uh, dashboard fits up in there as nice as can be, and uh, I think the car took a light roll. It was more than just hit. But the chassis is very straight. Nothing happened to the chassis or the suspension. So uh, uh, the rest of it seems just fine. Mm -hmm. The uh, 275 GTB was known as sort of a cafe racer. Uh, can you relate some of your driving experience to us on All right. On yeah, I haven't had the car that long. Uh, I've only ha I've had it a little bit less than a year, but uh, I have taken it on some brisk rides through the, the mountains and up to Carmel, and uh, I took it out and ran it at Willow Springs uh, one weekend, and uh, the car was uh, surprisingly good in the way it handled, and um, the engine had just been rebuilt, so I was very, very careful in watching my rev limit, and I didn't want to take it over about 6,000 RPM because we hadn't retorqued the heads yet. But it, it handled well, uh, the brakes had been redone, and GTBs are famous for having very bad brakes, and uh, this one stops quite well. I ran it just with the normal uh, street tires, the Michelin XWXs, so they were a little bit slippery, and it didn't handle like a race car as far as the tire grip is concerned. But other than that, it was a very civilized car to have on a racetrack. After many years of racing Cobras, to have something like this, it seems uh, very, very plush and uh, very docile, uh, and yet it's quite fast. The uh, Ferraris are always noted for their uh, sporty driving uh, characteristics. Do you find the suspension of the 275 uh, to be fairly neutral handling? Very neutral, yeah. It's a, it's a pleasure to drive it. You, you know what it's going to do. It's very, very predictable. Uh, the, the, the tires being a little bit slippery, being street tires, uh, were I felt like I was always a little bit on edge with it, but I was trying to drive it very, very hard. And I think that with a, with a set of race tires or even the, uh, the newer street tires that are a lot stickier, this car would handle beautifully. I think for, as a dual purpose car, it's really tough to beat because uh, it, you can drive it to the track, race it around for a few hours and drive it home. You don't have to put it on a trailer or carry uh, an entire van full of spare parts. It's kind of a change. Mm -hmm. So that's... Uh, I think it's a terrific car. So you would say that probably the limitations would be more into the tires than in the suspension of the car? Yes, very much so. It, it does need uh, something in the way of tires that would be sticky, and whether, whether they be vintage, vintage race tires or some of the newer uh, tires that, that uh, either, I guess, BF Goodrich has a comp tire that they're putting out that's supposed to be quite good on the street and on the track, which I'd like to try sometime. Mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, future racing plans for the car? I really don't know at this point. I'm, I'm going to play at a few club events, and I'll be with the Cobra Club and maybe the Ferrari Club. And if I find that the car is competitive at all, that, then I will race it. The thing about this car is being a 65, in vintage events, it has to run against Grand Sport Corvettes and uh, the Cobras, and that's awfully tough competition. I, I, I just don't see this car really being able to stay with any of those because it's, it's underpowered by about 100 horsepower compared to those. Mm -hmm. Visiting a partially restored GTB can give us some insight into the innards of this fine machine. As with most automobiles, rust was always a problem in the wheel wells and rocker panels as was electrolytic corrosion in the steel and aluminum door assemblies. 
Restoration calls for cutting all rust out completely or it will grow again. This is a 275 GTB long nose, a later model with the four cam engine. Two cooling fans provided much needed air circulation for the critically designed motor. Featuring a dry sump oil system, the oil storage tank is located in the right front wheel well. tubular steel substructure supported the 4-cam power plant, which was charted at 300 horsepower. This particular version was Ferrari's answer to the Lamborghini, just then starting to be marketed. restoration of the flowing lines of the Ferrari that all body panels be fitted properly. The behind the dash wiring configuration resembles a complicated space traveler. were controlled via a crank and cable system rather than a gear and rod assembly. Rear bulkheads behind the passenger seats hid the fuel tanks. fitting location for a discussion of the brutal 275 GTBC than Los Angeles's Mulholland Drive, long a favorite challenge racing spot for racers and would-be racers. Twisting through the Hollywood Hills, many have come to challenge and win, others have challenged and gone down to defeat. This is one of 11 GTBCs constructed in 1966 for racing in the FIA's Grand Touring category. An all-aluminum body was wrapped around a highly lightened chassis. A single overhead cam motor was boosted to racing specifications and was, in essence, the most successful 250 LM motor with three carburetors affixed. The engine was bolted directly to the frame, snubbing the comforts of the usual rubber engine mounts. This particular example remains as it was during its Le Mans outing in 1967. Owner Jim Wallace comments on some of the special features of this race car. Side marker, the white lights uh, illuminate the number uh, and aid the timing and scoring people. 
to identify the cars that are going at, at night. The uh, red and the blue lights on the side were the pit indicator lights. Each team had a different marking. Some uh, teams had the lights on the top, some teams preferred them on the side, and it just helps the pit people know as their cars are coming down the pit lane to be prepared to refuel and, and change the tires, whatever the car needed at the pit stops. This car you know, is unique in the fact that it's the only one uh, that was produced at the factory with the outside filler cap. competition wheels completed the competitive edge. Let's sit back and relive an important slice of Ferrari racing history as we enjoy the sights and sounds of the 275 GTBC skirting the dips and turns of Mulholland.
4-cam version of the 275 GTB was used only in the long nose version. Boasting over 300 horsepower, the powerful engine was enough for most amateur cafe racers and highway travelers. The troublesome flexible drive shaft on earlier models was replaced in the later long noses by a rigid torque tube encircling the drive shaft, thereby keeping vibration to a minimum. Front bumper rets were often removed by GTB owners as they offered little protection and removal gave a more racy appearance to the cars. Performance of the GTB was excellent with 60 miles per hour being reached in 6 seconds and 100 in 14 or 15 seconds. Top speed was in the neighborhood of 155. Approximately 200 examples of the 275 GTS were built in 1965. A convertible version of the GTB with a completely different body, but basically mechanically the same. Most GTBs featured aluminum doors, trunk lids, and hoods, with the rest of the body and chassis constructed of steel. On special order, an all-alloyed bodied GTB was available. About 70 of that latter version were produced. Barani wire wheels were available as options for discerning buyers. The gas filler was located inside the rear compartment and the interior of the automobile was protected from fumes by a seal on the rear lid. A very comprehensive tool kit was included with each 275 GTB. Impressive Ferrari engine, four camshafts, 3.3 liters, 12 cylinders, six double throat Weber carburetors, dual oil filters, dual distributors, one for each bank of cylinders.
matrix supplied spark for each of the 12 cylinders. Production of the 275 GTB and its open version, the 275 GTS, ended in 1968. And Ferrari was without a new streetcar until the unveiling of the Daytona two years later. Only recently have the 275s become sought after by collectors, and their value and interest level have soared. The 275 GTB, a strong carrier of the Ferrari flag of excellence, touted by many to be the best handling road and racing vehicle the boys from Marinello ever produced.